There have been many different approaches to tackling inflation over the years, some good and some less so. Like for example, Turkey's approach of lowering rates during rampant inflation is somewhat questionable. However, central banks, at least those in major economies, typically learn from these lessons. But even so, in 2022, central banks like the Federal Reserve in the US took on a lot of criticism for moving too slow with their approach to inflation. So why weren't they more forceful in tightening monetary policy? Was there some sort of example from the past that the Fed were taking lessons from? Yes, most likely. And there is actually one particular case study we can look at called the Volcker approach. This approach was named after Paul Volcker, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve, who took on the job in the late 1970s with his primary focus being to fix inflation. Now, he took quite a hardline approach and it did lead to some successes, but also had some really notable failures. So let's explore the causes of inflation in the early 1980s, the Volcker approach, and how that may have shaped monetary policy from that point onwards. Dubbed the Great Inflation, this was a period of high inflation that began in 1964, peaked at 14% in 1980, before then returning to around 3.5% in the second half of the 80s. There are many factors that caused this inflation, which are still being debated today and could be an entire topic of a video on its own, but to keep it simple for now, one of the key causes came from loose monetary policy. In other words, the Fed overstimulated the economy, and even today that's still considered to be quite a big blunder in the Federal Reserve's past. One of the big shocks that led to this was an oil embargo in 1973, which led to prices quadrupling. Now, the Fed knew they couldn't do much about oil prices, but those shocks were also contributing to increases in unemployment, and that was something the Fed were going to try and fix, with ultra-loose policy, which also stimulates inflation. Now, fiscal policy was also considered to be a bit of a mess at this time. For example, Nixon tried to implement price controls that did work in the short term, but they didn't address the issue of the supply shortage, and holding prices low kept demand high, resulting in higher prices over the longer term. Jumping forward, the Iranian crisis happened in 1979, which caused oil prices to triple, and then along came Mr. Volcker. By the time Paul Volcker became the chairman of the Federal Reserve, inflation was over 11% and unemployment was around 6%. So it's safe to say that he had some tough decisions to make, but ultimately inflation had to be controlled first. Now by this time monetary policy was already being tightened, but things were about to become much more extreme. He said, my basic philosophy is over time we have no choice but to deal with the inflationary situation because over time inflation and the unemployment rate go together. Isn't that the lesson of the 1970s? The sentiment had clearly shifted and it was time to get a grip on inflation and so the Volcker approach kicked off with aggressive rate hikes. Unsurprisingly, the economy slowed, unemployment was increasing but most importantly for the Federal Reserve, inflation was slowing. So on the surface, Volcker's aggressive approach was appearing to pay off. Now, since the economy slowed, a dovish pivot followed, and then the economy began to recover again, and another pivot followed with interest rates being increased. But problems with the aggressive approach became extremely apparent within just a few years when the economy fell into a severe recession. Unemployment peaked, but I guess you could say at least inflation was slowing. So overall then, Volcker achieved his initial objective of reducing inflation, and he did it relatively quickly as well. Inflation dropped from around 13.5% in 1980 to just 3.2% by 1983. But if it was so successful, why doesn't the Federal Reserve want to use this approach now? Despite the success in tackling inflation, the Volcker approach did have its limits. It was successful in reducing inflation in the short term, with a slight recession in the 1980s, but the high interest rates made it more expensive for businesses and consumers to borrow money, leading to slowing consumer spending and investment. In addition, the Volcker approach did not address the underlying causes of inflation, it only addressed the symptoms, and so it wasn't a long-term solution to the problem. As a result, the US economy fell back into recession in 1981, and this time it had a severe impact on economic growth and unemployment. So the Volcker approach taught us some important lessons about inflation. Firstly, it taught us that inflation can be effectively combated in the short term through aggressive manipulation of the money supply by hiking rates. 
However, secondly, it also taught us that there are trade-offs associated with combating inflation in this way. By raising interest rates and reducing the money supply, economic growth can be severely affected if the central bank moves too fast. It also taught us that inflation cannot be effectively addressed in the long term without addressing the underlying causes. Although tighter policy may reduce demand for things like oil, it's not going to fix a supply shortage if there's too much imbalance. And of course, there are many other issues that we haven't discussed, like the impact on income inequality, the causing of a debt crisis due to higher interest rates, volatility in the financial markets, and geopolitical issues due to the strengthening of the dollar, which affected international trade and the borrowing for developing nations. So ultimately, the Volcker approach was successful in reducing inflation in the US. However, it also revealed the limits of this approach and the trade-offs associated with it. It's easy to look back today and consider Paul Volcker's approach to be one of the most successful in targeting inflation. I mean, after all, inflation stayed under 5% ever since, at least until 2022. However, it came at a great cost to the US economy and no doubt impacted the lives of many Americans quite severely. In fact, it's even claimed that out of protest, there were some builders who started delivering pieces of timber to Volcker because the excessively high interest rates put them out of business. Now, many critics saw the approach by Volcker as being inhumane and unnecessarily harsh. And the lessons are still relevant today. And the path that the Federal Reserve took in 2022 and are likely taking in 2023 is drawing on the lessons learned from that Volcker period. Yes, inflation is unbearably high, although it seems to be somewhat easing over the short term, at least at the time of filming this. The Fed has been willing to allow a slight recession and higher unemployment to take place if needed but I don't think they're willing to repeat what took place in 1981, and nor do I think that we should want them to.